a picturesque town nestled in the heart of Canada, where the beauty of nature and the tranquility of the rivers weave a mesmerizing tapestry. In the quiet city of Miramichi, a chilling tale unfolds, echoing the whispers of terror that once gripped its heart. Life seemed idyllic in the quiet town where everyone knew each other, but behind the friendly faces, a chilling tale was about to unfold. As the sun dipped low on the horizon, casting a warm glow over the town, little did its residents know that something far darker was stirring beneath the surface. Alan Legere was the man whose outward strength belied the darkness within. His obsession with control led him down a path of heinous crimes, transforming the once peaceful streets into a macabre playground of fear. The ominous aura of the Miramichi woods masked his every move as he prowled the night, leaving a trail of brutality in his wake. As the shadows deepen, the question looms. Was Legere a product of his troubled past, or was something more sinister at play? Brace yourself as we delve into the depths of this true horror story, a tale that still haunts the Miramichi community today. The beauty of nature and the sinister undercurrents of human nature collided, creating a narrative that transcends time. Join us as we unravel the layers of Miramichi, from its enchanting facade to the shadows that lurk beneath. Alan Legere, born in Chatham, Miramichi, Canada, grew up in challenging circumstances on February 13, 1948. Raised in a family that faced economic hardships, Legere experienced the struggles of a disadvantaged upbringing. These early years of financial difficulty likely contributed to his feelings of inferiority and a desire for control and power. Motivated by an intense desire for control and power, his criminal repertoire expanded beyond petty theft, and he began breaking into homes, targeting people while they slept. The sinister thrill of invading personal spaces and instilling fear in his victims became a twisted satisfaction for Legere. These early crimes laid the foundation for a much darker and more sinister chapter in Miramichi's history. On the fateful evening of June 21, 1986, Alan Legere, accompanied by two accomplices, Todd Matchett and Scott Curtis, orchestrated a robbery at a convenience store in Black River Bridge, New Brunswick. With a calculated approach, they cut the power before breaking into the store, encountering the elderly owners John and Mary Glendenning. A vicious assault ensued, leaving the couple severely beaten and Mary subjected to sexual assault. Following the brutal crime, the trio fled the scene, leaving behind a traumatized Mary Glendenning, who managed to crawl to a phone and dial 911. Despite the dispatcher's assistance, John Glendenning succumbed to the injuries inflicted during the attack. The police promptly tracked down the perpetrators, leading to Matchett pleading guilty to the murder of John Glendenning and the assault on Mary. At the same time, Curtis and Legere faced convictions after trial. While serving his murder sentence at the Atlantic Institution Maximum Security Penitentiary in Renew Quarryville, under the watchful eye of the Correctional Service of Canada, CSC, Alan Legere managed to orchestrate a daring escape. On May 3, 1989, CSC personnel temporarily transported Legere from the penitentiary to the Dr. Georges L. Dumont Regional Hospital in Moncton, New Brunswick, seeking treatment for an ear infection. Seizing an opportune moment, Legere persuaded the CSC personnel to allow him to use a washroom at the hospital alone. There, he revealed a shocking method of concealment. He had hidden a sharpened piece of metal in his rectum. Exploiting this makeshift tool, he deftly picked the lock on his handcuffs and, with a sudden display of aggression, held the officers at bay before making a swift and audacious escape from the building. Legere, now on the loose, employed a combination of carjacking and motor vehicle theft to evade recapture and disappear into the shadows once again, successfully. During the seven-month reign of his escape, Alan Legere committed four gruesome murders in and around the towns of Chatham, Newcastle, and neighboring communities, now part of the city of Miramichi. On the ominous night of May 29, 1989, the tranquility of Miramichi was shattered as Alan Legere targeted Annie Flam a 75-year-old resident whose life would be tragically cut short by the brutality of Legere's actions. Under the cover of darkness, Legere invaded Annie Flam's home, unleashing a wave of terror upon the unsuspecting victim. The details of the crime were marked by extreme violence as Legere subjected Annie Flam to a vicious assault that included both beatings and sexual violence. The macabre nature of the incident was intensified by the fact that Flam's sister also faced a brutal assault during the same horrifying episode. 
The aftermath of Legere's rampage left the Flam sisters traumatized and the Miramichi community gripped with fear. He again left the scene with no clues. Days passed. On the fateful night of October 13, 1989, the peace in the town of Newcastle was shattered once again as Alan Legere continued his murderous spree, targeting the Donny sisters, Linda and Donna. The sisters were famous and beloved members of their close-knit community and became unsuspecting victims of Legere's escalating violence. Legere, driven by a sadistic urge, broke into the Donny home, plunging the sisters into a nightmare of unimaginable horror. The brutality inflicted upon Linda, 41, and Donna, 45, was beyond comprehension. Both were subjected to severe beatings, sexual assault, and the desecration of their home. The assailant, devoid of remorse, even set fire to the Donny residence before making his escape, leaving behind a scene of utter devastation. The Miramichi community, already reeling from previous atrocities, was once again plunged into shock and grief. The double murder of the Dawney sisters added to the growing list of victims who had fallen prey to Alan Legere's reign of terror. The Miramichi community was ensnared in a nightmarish web of uncertainty as the calendar turned its pages. The ominous shadows that cloaked the town seemed to thicken with each passing day as the elusive killer continued to evade the grasp of the perplexed authorities. On that fateful night of November 16, 1989, the darkness descended once again claiming Father James Smith as the fourth victim in Alan Legere's unrelenting spree of terror. Father Smith, a pillar of respect and spirituality in the community, became an unfortunate target for Legere's sadistic whims. The assault, marked by unparalleled violence, left behind a haunting scene of broken bones, severe head trauma, and the suffocating grip of strangulation. The cause of Father James Smith's demise was a chilling fusion of physical brutality and asphyxiation, sending shockwaves through the Miramichi community. The realization that Legere's malevolence knew no bounds began to solidify, transforming the once tranquil streets into a sinister hunting ground. The familiar landscape had metamorphosed into a breeding ground for unspeakable horrors, and the community remained ensnared in the grip of an elusive predator lurking in the shadows. The search for the murderer continued shrouded in darkness as the town held its breath, awaiting an end to the relentless nightmare. As the town held its collective breath, a breakthrough moment arrived when a witness account and DNA analysis pointed unequivocally to Legere's involvement in the gruesome murders. The meticulous investigation uncovered Legere's genetic material at the crime scenes, linking him unmistakably to the horrifying acts that had plagued Miramichi. Armed with this crucial evidence, the authorities launched an intensified manhunt, preparing for the inevitable confrontation with the elusive killer. Aware of Legere's potential retaliation and the gravity of the threat he posed, the police, along with the community, braced themselves for a showdown. The town, once paralyzed by fear, now stood united in its determination to end the reign of terror. The decisive moment arrived when Legere was cornered, attempting to flee the area. In a dramatic turn of events, he found himself confronted by the relentless pursuit of the authorities. Despite his penchant for violence, Legere surprisingly surrendered without resistance, his capture marking a symbolic victory over the malevolent force that had haunted Miramichi. The arrest relieved the beleaguered community, a moment when the predator was finally captured, and the town could begin healing from the scars of its harrowing past. Yet the haunting question lingered. What motivated Alan Legere to unleash such brutality on the tranquil streets of Miramichi?